Okay, so dear Dhamma practitioners, be comfortable yourself and relax your body. Keep your back straight, make it straight in one line and your right palm on your left. So gently close your eyes and bring your attention to this bell sound. And while you're focusing to the sound, mentally relax your body, relax your mind and relax your breathing with your thoughts. So do nothing extra. Just follow the sound, please. Namo tasa bhagavato arato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arato samma sambuddhasa Homage to the blessed one the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So dear Dhamma practitioners, before we start our practice session, we'll take a few minutes to understand how this meditation can help for us to develop our inner awareness. Because when it comes to meditation nowadays, there are many kinds of meditations and it, take, it can take us to different kind of result. But when it comes to the Buddha's teaching and the meditation that we practice here, tranquility meditation and vipassana meditation or samatha and vipassana or tranquility or an insight. So this both has a very specific way to understand things and develop yourself educate yourself, practice yourself, little by little, little by little. So for that, we give the very authentic informations which you can develop yourself and apply to your practice and find a way for yourself. Because when it comes to the, the very meaning of meditation, it's, it's nowadays it's called kind of like a mindfulness. But as you know, for everything in our day-to-day -day life, we need some kind of mindfulness. And then some others say, focus to one thing. Of course, when you focus to one thing, you can get some good result out of it. But the thing is this, that what you focus maybe can bring a difficulty to others. As example, if you want to steal something, if you want to kill someone, you have to focus to that. Like a snipers, they are well trained to focus. And they are well trained to be mindful. But still, they are intention to kill someone. So then you can't count it as kind of like the meditation. But when it comes to the qualities of the meditation, if you go with words, it's kind of like the similar. So then in day-to-day -day life, for ourselves, we have to remember what is the difference then. And how we can understand that difference? Because focusing to anything and becoming mindful regarding anything is not going to be profitable for you. So then the, the very important thing is, maybe you think about becoming mindful, but you don't see regarding what 
for what you become mindful. Maybe we neglect that. And then we think, oh, I practice meditation. I become so mindful about it. I am so focused to it. But we don't see. But it's going to bring us. So the very purpose of practice this all to purify ourselves, refine our thoughts, and getting into a very comfortable and profitable place. So when it comes to the, the very authentic name, the bhavana, the very connotation take us to some meanings which you can't find with this mindfulness or focus. So one is cultivation. Cultivation of your inner good qualities related to loving kindness, compassion, generosity, wisdom. And another thing is way to be. This means that to, to transform yourself and coming to be. Way to be. And another one is the coming to be. This means it brings you to the present moment. That means the reality. So, if you become mindful regarding something, and if you become focused regarding something outside somewhere, it may disconnect you from the, the reality. So then it's not going to become bhavana or hear what we practice as meditation. It may become something else. So the bhavana or the, the meditation what we practice with the tranquility and insight, it should bring you to the moment. And it should bring some kind of development and it should bring you to connect to the reality. So that is the very basic foundation. So then when you practice, you have to remember not to disconnect from that foundation and go somewhere else, but come back again and again and again. And where to be, why? Because that we look for transformation. We look for liberation. We look for tranquility state. The path to be that more, to be in that place. Path to be into tranquility state. Path to be into the transformation is the method of meditation. And other thing is, once you come to be, be into the moment, that means to the reality. Reality means the present moment. You have to develop ability to hold into that mental state and expand the duration. That is what the, the practice. So when you become very conscious regarding your own practice, you can do it. So in the beginning, you have to find a very profitable mental object. And that should be always related to the reality or connected to the present moment. And once you have that, you develop method, you develop the path to be with it and hold it to it and then expand the duration. So that is tranquility state. And that is tranquility meditation. 
And that is what focus. Here, what we mean by focus. Not in, in the ordinary life, in day to day, that you have to focus to this, you have to focus to that, so like that. You take a very primary mental object which related to the present moment, reality. And then we have a more deeper purpose to understand the reality. Because when it comes to the teachings, we, if we go back to the very beginning of the teachings that related to the Buddha's message, for noble truth, eightfold path. So with that, in the beginning that we have to have some kind of understanding and then we have to come to some kind of practice and education. So, and in that education, there is something highly you have to educate. So that is ethics, the mind and the wisdom. So that old eightfold path, in an ordinary way you can study, and at the same time, once you into the path, it will take you to more higher level of practice or study. So study doesn't mean here you go and learn from books. No, study means by yourself. Again and again, again and again you see. So one is ethics. With your bodily, verbally, mentally actions, you become more disciplined. It develops some kind of self-discipline. And why? Because you're not going to have a very disturbed lifestyle to others. Out of your living life, you're not going to disturb to others. You're not going to bother it. You're not going to become a pain to other people. Why it, why it like that? Because the reason is this. And sometimes, you know, so in our village areas in Sri Lanka, sometimes that uh, dogs, you know, everywhere on the road, maybe they're sleeping. And some guys sometimes, you know, when they walk, close by the dog, they kick the dog, you know, because there's a dog sleep and they just, you know, they try to make fun and they kick the dog. And you know what happened? And the dog wake up right away, bite the leg. So when you don't have self-discipline, that is what, the, the same thing with ourselves in day-to-day -day life in the society. And we don't understand. There are some people and we, if we go and disturb to them, interfere with them, maybe we are into trouble. So that is one thing. It is give a protection to ourselves while we are on the journey and at the same time. And other people also feel comfortable and more deeply, you're not going to get hurt out of any actions. And you're, you don't going to have any kind of doubt even regarding your, your own actions. So that is a kind of like a foundation for your meditation, the moral practice. So sometimes when your mind is so busy, maybe you look into yourself and see, what kind of lifestyle you have? Because if you more interfere with others and disturb others, and if you are bothering to others, and always you are gathering with others, so it's kind of like the fine, the end of the day, you are the one who's going to get disturbed. So then remember, it's, kind of, it's not just only you disturb, out of that your disturbances, what will happen maybe, the feedback going to become so dangerous. So it is better you have a lifestyle not to disturb to others. No. 
So that is one thing that through the ethics, you gain that comfortable lifestyle and at the same time deeply, mentally, you're going to have a very comfortable mind. And also, as you know, in day-to-day -day life, whatever we, our lifestyle, end of the day, become our memory. So then when you have undisturbed lifestyle, it brings more clarity to yourself. And the second part is the mind. In a certain way, you have to practice with the mind. You have to know the mind. And you have to, to set, that's why you practice the tranquility meditation. Because as you know, the mind is kind of like a wild animal and everywhere, running everywhere. And in a certain way, you have to bring in that mind to one place. And you, that's why our, our awareness everywhere and then, then by the time you have to bring the awareness to one place. So that is another practice. And for that, we use the words focus mindfulness but it should be profitable so how you can find it as a profitable out of your intention of the practice should not develop your greed hatred or the delusion and it should not disconnect from the reality that's mean from, from, from the present moment it should always related to the present moment and if it is a that more close, if you, whatever the primary mental object you take, you have to remember rather than that the object that you have the outside, you have to be more, more mindful regarding the behavior of your awareness or the focus. That is a very key point because when we, when we, when we look into something, what happens suddenly, maybe we saw into that, and we forget the very mechanism, the very behavior of the mind. So then always remember, when it comes to the focus, when it comes to the mindfulness, when it comes to the attention, this all, everything, the more and more, more and more, you have to be disciplined with your own mind, not the outside object. So that, that way, your mindfulness meditation going to become more clear. And inside you start to work and more and more you're going to see your own mind, behavior of the mind. And the third one is the wisdom. And what is the wisdom? In the recognizing once you come to the moment, once you have that tranquility mind, see the reality. And the very behavior, very nature of the reality, analyze it thoroughly, deeply, in a kind of like a holistic way, without missing anything, without take out anything, without adding something else. You take it as it is and observe without putting your any kind of views without any kind of preconditioned mind, you have to observe it. That is a totally different way of experiencing or total different way of recognizing the reality. Because as human beings, as ordinary people, what we learn, we just learn to understand things according to theories. Theory is good because as example, that uh, even the Tripitaka, even the sutras, even the other lessons or the books, sometimes we take from the history. Our enlightened masters and they practice and some, someone recorded it and then somebody put it to the books. And now we have, so we can be, when we read it, maybe it, it, it's kind of like a theory. Theory good until you come to the mind because the mind go with the, the names and forms and the theories come out of the patterns. So the mind has more capability to understand the patterns. 
But when it comes to wisdom, wisdom is more beyond the theories. So we have to use the theories to understand certain things in a very basic level. But when it comes to your higher level of practice, you have to remember, drop all the theories, all the lessons, all the methods, and to become free. That freedom give you some kind of understanding. That is that understanding always happen within you. That's that's why it called the self realization. So that is the basic structure that we develop our practice step by step, step by step. So when it comes to the vipassana level, that means. When once you have that tranquility state, and from that tranquility state, thoroughly, deeply, when you observe the very present moment of your experience, perception, what you can see? You can see just it is just a moment of experience. But it doesn't mean, you have to remember, it doesn't mean there is nothing. If there is nothing, who we are, what is this world, how it become like this? There is something. But that whatever something, whatever you see, whatever you experience, not permanent. Why it is not permanent? Because it happened as a result of something. And the thing is, when the, the, when the effect is there, once you hold it to effect, you don't see the cause. If you don't see the cause, just if you try to understand something by effect, it is not going to be right understanding. So that's why you have to have very, very strong, very clear, vigorous mind to, to get into that, go beyond the, the effect. Why? Because we are more into the surface level of experience or the feelings or the effect. So once you have the clarity in you, you're not going to hold it to that and you look deeply. And that is where you see something else behind it. And uh, you see there is something else. Here. So then you recognize that even though we have this life, we experience these things, there is no such a place that we look kind of like a V into kind of like the beginning, the beginning point. Always it is something, there is something. Even very, our very life, if we look from this place to look into yourself, you will see that life happening, but at the same time, it is not the same thing. And it, it, it changed moment by moment, moment by moment. And also by the time it accumulates things, accumulate things. This very nature, once you understand yourself, you recognize even though we experience these things, this all related to the causation. And that causation take you out of the, the mental structure that you develop regarding this outside world. Then, even though outside things exit, you are in your mind, the mental structure not going to be there. So then the outside things, of course, you see, but in your mind anymore, you don't take it as a permanent entity exist independently. Because you see, it is there, but it is not a such a permanent thing happen just by itself. It's a result of something and then you go behind it and then you see another result, another result, another result. So like that, you are capable to understand the, the causality, but not into any kind of name or form. So that is a mental experience that's happened totally inside you. But in a conventional life, remember, we have to come to the very 
first principle that is what called the ethics even though you have that understanding you have to remember you know how to maintain your life without disturbing to others in every way all the time in every direction with your bodily verbally mentally action so otherwise once you understand this you're not going to argue with it or you're not going to neglect anybody or kind of like that no you know why because when it come to the reality conventional and eternal so that in this conventional world it we need the names and forms we need the patterns we need the theories because that all other people don't know about this so then we have to address to them according to the language that they know then they understand it it's a very simple method when you behave with the baby you're not going to behave like a elder no you bend all your joints and you become like a baby that's how you communicate you know when you are capable to more blend with the other person and then your communication become more better and it bring the harness so the same thing happen in you even though you experience deeply in you there is no such a permanent entity exist independently itself holding to any personal identity but still when it come to ordinary life we accept and we respect all the the ethics theories methods all the names and forms and we accept it so this method if you are capable to develop day by day day by day day by day by the time it will help you to understand that this everything what we experience what we call as reality it happen only in this very moment it will never going to happen anymore then you your your way of understanding way of thinking going to shift to different level now you bring your fully awareness attention effort to the 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 present moment and you do your best to get the best out of it why because you know this moment is going to go and then you tune to the your mind your body tune to the the timing and you tune to the environment and just imagine your body mind the environment intention awareness this everything come together how powerful it is but what happened to us it always separate 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 when you go to office you think about the the house when you come home you think about the office when you go to vacation you think about uh, your garden when you come to the garden you think about vacation when you driving you think about your hike when you hike you think about your driving when you bicycle you think about oh i miss my walking and when you walk when you think about oh if i have a bike how good it is so you always disconnect and not only the mind the place it, it disconnect from the place just imagine you are in the garden and then now you think about the the vacation somewhere else what happened you disconnect from the environment it is just not a thought the whole the very moment of reality going to shift to a dream that's what happened all the time 
everywhere even you with the friends and you know go with everybody and you go for a lunch maybe weekend lunch and once you sit you start to talk about you know their past and that that shift you you shift from the environment maybe you don't know what you ate but the thing the secret is this try to catch it rather than being in reality we used to be in this shift change and now we addicted to that change so then what happen in any situation we 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 try to create that change it is stimulate our our inner feelings maybe you can tell it kind of like a brain cell or you know kind of like that and we go into neuroscience maybe you know maybe you wiring and firing according to different level and it it may be release some kind of chemicals like always people are now addicted to go to cell phone you know it is addiction why always when you go there when you check the phone it release some kind of dopamine or some kind of you know chemicals and you feel good so the same thing happens when you disconnect from the environment time space your body your awareness focus when you disconnect this chaos this disconnection create some kind of feelings in you what happen we are addicted to that feelings so what is this meditation means we bring this everything together into one place and you bring it and first you have to learn to to be with it and once you be with it what happen that the addiction that whatever we had for disconnection start to change why because always this connection is more better higher than that so then you you slowly recover you you get heal yourself you transform that level to this level and then you going to be with it and that coming to be again and again and again and again develop your deeper awareness and that awareness will take you to recognize the reality how things come to be as they are in that reality you not bound to anything you not bound to your inner experience you not bound to your self centered view you not bound to you that is the freedom not about other maybe you are the husband same husband maybe you are wife maybe the you are same wife you you are the child you are the parents you are the friends maybe more than any other time you bend your all the joints in front of your husband or wife you become more surrender you become more humble with your partner why because you know there is no such a thing inside but look at the world people always hold it to identity egocentric mind oh i am the best personally we have that and as a result of that what happened oh i am the best oh i am the boss you know personally i think and the family it 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 kind of like a virus fungus go to the families everybody in the family become kind of like that attitude and it go to the village and it go to the state it go to the the country and that is what happened all over the world everybody want to be the boss i am the i, I am better than you i am better than you this self centered ego centric mind will kill us you know that that's what happened it give the pain to us it kill us it destroy everything so then you have to remember it's not a start somewhere in a certain place isolated incident it's happening inside us and sometimes it become more powerful and that is what sometimes we see in some countries oh i want to go and overtake you oh i am the best you have to listen to me so like that but maybe if you and me become 
you know the president in a country maybe the situation is going to become more worse than <laughs> now it is because that's the human need but we have to understand it come from our deeper inner behavior not from somewhere else so then always look into that because when this situation happens you know some people say oh now aliens you know overtake human mind human consciousness oh some supernatural powers punishing the world now so kind of like that people say there are a lot of people believe that no no it's it's our own inside you know it's it's a little little kind of like you know the, the spark fire and as you know when when it become more powerful it ignite everything so then yourself this practice will help you to go deeper go deeper and take that out that's how you have to purify yourself so end of the, the, the by the time this in this journey that is what you experience so with that let's get into practice little bit now so your right palm on your left neck get straight in one line and be comfortable with your posture so bring your attention to your body and scan head to toes three times and say supatveva oh may i be well and happy Take a moment and think we gathered here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique. All the Buddhas, all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved wisdom. So we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge. In this moment with this sitting, may my body become more comfortable. May my breath be more smooth. May no difficulties come to me. May all the success come to me. also think for a moment this is the last moment we spending in this very lifetime and detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts just try to remain in the present moment observing the sensation of your inhalations and exhalations so in the beginning deeply and gently breathe in breathe out three times and find the sensation please and allow your inhalations exhalations happen itself when it happen through the sensation recognize inhalation as inhalation exhalation as exhalation do nothing extra to allow it to happen naturally itself
Bring my attention to your body, please. Observe your posture. We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light through entire your compound, village, city, state, country, world, around this universe. Also as far as you can, through galaxies, other planets, stars, reminding yourself like this. With clear intention, mentally repeat after me. May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. May everyone be happy and safe. And may their hearts be filled with joy. May all living beings live in security and in peace. Beings who are pale or strong, tall or short, big or small, visible or not visible, near or far away. Already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart. Forward. Visualize yourself and send it as a light. To your backside. To your left side. And to your right side. Downward. And upward. To all six directions at once, like the moon, the sun, spread the light, spread the energy, without any condition, without any limitation, without any resistance or without any judgment. Let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it, with the maximum effort to the highest. Wishing yourself, may all living beings in this universe be well and happy. See, sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So first of all, we offer this practice to the great qualities of the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha. 
and also by the power of this meritorious deed, may all of us attain to the supreme bliss of Nibbana. May all your guardian angels and deities will receive these merits and increase their longevity and protect all of you from any kind of planetary influences or any ill effects. Ittata chami sampadam punya sampadam sabbe deva numudantu sabbe sampati siddhya sabbe bhuta numudantu sabbe sampati siddhya sabbe sata numudantu sabbe sampati siddhya imaya dhamma nu dhamma pati patiya buddham puje mi dhammam puje mi sangham puje mi attaya imaya pati patiya jati jara vyadi maranam ha paribunjisami idam me punya kammam asavakaya vanho tu sabba dukkha pamunchatu blessing